Hey guys, how you going? Okay, I came across this thing today while I was looking at the weather, hoping for snow, okay? Uh, <laughs> and weather zone, I have the weather zone app on my phone. And I read this, sudden stratospheric warming event underway. Here's what it means for Australian weather. Okay, now that depends on whether you believe these people or not. That's up to you. Ensemble mean for 10 HPA, which I b believe is... The hectopascal pressure unit, uh, the SI unit for atmospheric or barometric pressure, okay, and geopotential. So we'll see. This is from ECMWF. Who is that? The European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. We'll see how accurate they are, okay? See how this ages. A rare sudden a stratospheric warming event is beginning to occur above Antarctica and it may influence Australia's weather in the coming weeks. I wonder what's going on in the stratosphere over there. Huh. Interesting, in Antarctica. Okay. The term sudden stratospheric warming, SSW, refers to an abrupt increase in air temperature high above either of Earth's polar regions, typically on the magnitude of tens of degrees Celsius in a few days. This warming occurs in a layer of the atmosphere called the stratosphere, roughly 30 to 40 kilometres above the surface. While warming in the stratosphere does not immediately or always affect weather patterns near the ground, SSW events can filter down through the atmosphere and influence tropospheric weather in the following weeks following the initial SSW. If an SSW event does make its way down to the troposphere, it can cause tropospheric polar vortex to weaken, which allows cold polar air to drift further away from Antarctica, or the Arctic if in the Northern Hemisphere, and spread toward the mid-latitudes. Through this domino effect, SSW events can cause the southern annular mode to shift into a negative phase, which can have the following impacts in Australia during winter. More cold fronts and low pressure systems over southern Australia. Increased rainfall and snow potential in southwest and southeast Australia. Reduced rainfall in parts of eastern Australia and stronger winds in the southern half of Australia. Southern annular mode, SAM, is an index used to monitor the position of westerly winds that flow from west to east between Australia and Antarctica. When the SAM is in the negative phase, these westerly winds and cold fronts and low pressure systems they carry are located further north than usual for that time of year. When the SAM is positive, the westerly winds, cold fronts and low pressure systems are located further south than usual. Sudden stratospheric warming underway. Warming has been detected in the stratosphere above the Antarctic region over the past week, revealing that an SSW event is starting to occur in the southern hemisphere. Some forecast models predict that this stratospheric warming will continue over the next week and start to filter down through the atmosphere later this month. The graph below shows observed stratospheric temperatures in red and the forecast from one model in green. Uh, from these lines you can see a sudden increase in the temperature beyond the normal range, potentially getting even warmer than any other observed event this time of year. Now what does that mean? Just wait and see. Okay, it's currently unclear whether the stratospheric warming will influence weather closer to the ground in the coming weeks. However, some models are already showing signs that the SSW signal will descend to lower altitudes during the second half of July. If this trend continues, it will increase the likelihood of a shift toward a negative SAM in late July or August. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so that's what it's doing. It's throwing it out there. Okay, we're getting a lot of the cool by the look of it. Okay, so Australia's over here. Okay, so just watch the blue. That's the cool air, obviously. Okay, it's going to reach and it's going to go quite far north in Australia there, guys. Very quickly, but it will hit. Uh, videos, forecast temperature at the 10 HPA top and 100 HPA bottom levels in the atmosphere according to the GFS model. The first animation shows warming over East Antarctica during the middle of July, which displaces the cold air within the stratospheric polar vortex. The second animation shows warming predicted to the south of Australia later in the month, 
indicating the downward progression of the SSW signal. Since April, Australia has been affected by a stagnant long wave ridge pattern leading to the persistent high pressure in the blight. As a result, there's been drought in WA and South Australia, western and south, abnormally wet conditions along the east coast and very low wind over western Victoria. This SSW event may disrupt this pattern for the Australian region. The images below show one forecast model predicting a shift toward lower sea level pressure near Australia in August and an associated increase in precip precipitation for southern Australia, which are both consistent with a shift towards a negative SAM. Okay, that means it's going to get mighty cold. What causes strat sudden stratospheric warming? Okay, SSW can be caused by large atmospheric waves propagating upward through the atmosphere and crashing into the stratospheric polar vortex. Yeah, no one's playing with anything, are they? Hmm. Especially down there in Antarctica, what are they doing? These waves can warm the polar stratosphere and weaken or even reverse the westerly winds that typically circulate above the poles in winter. An SSW event can be classified as minor or major based on the magnitude of warming and changes to the wind speed and direction in the stratosphere. A minor SSW occurs when the polar temperature increases by 25 degrees or more within one week at any stratospheric level. A major SSW requires an increase in temperature and a reversal of the westerly winds at the 10 HPA level in the polar regions. Only a few SSW events have been observed in the Southern Hemisphere with the most recent one occurring in 2019. Weather Zone's meteorologists will be keeping a close eye on the current SSW signal and updating the Weather Zone feed in coming weeks. And what it's going to do, I believe, is going to push it right up. Um, so it'll mean that the, the, um, the SSW will... Okay, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I did read this as when, if it heats up there, um, increased rainfall and snow potential in southwest and southeast Australia, more cold fronts and low pressure systems. Okay, um, and if an SSW event does make its way to the troposphere, it can cause the troposphere polar vortex to weaken, which allows cold polar air to drift further away from Antarctica and spread towards the mid-latitudes. And that is what we see. It's here. Australia's down here on this one, and it's pushing all of this. Looks quite high, actually, up to mid to the north of New South Wales. Okay, there's snow coming to the ski resorts. Much needed snowfalls are coming to Australian ski resorts. How much? We don't know. We've written several times this week about strong cold air mass with Antarctic origins, which is tracking towards southeastern Australia from this weekend onwards. The air mass will linger for an unusually long period and be cold enough for snow in elevated areas well beyond the mountains. Okay, well beyond the... Looks like I might get... Mm, I might get what I was hoping for. Uh, as you can see on this Bureau of Meteorology Met Eye chart for Monday, July the 15th, where purple blotches mean snow flakes are expected right up to the northern tablelands, guys. Okay, all the way up here. But how much is going to fall on the slopes? The short answer is that 25 to 50 centimetres should fall at most resorts between about Saturday and Thursday. We could even get lucky and see heavier falls, but the bottom line is the snowfall totals from weather systems like this are not easy to predict. <clears throat> that doesn't surprise me. They can't predict from one day to the next. Today was supposed to be 12 degrees where I am, and it got to a top of 8. In winter, we tend to look for moisture-laden cold fronts crossing the Great Australian Bite that surged northwards, delivering snow across the alpine areas of the southeast. This system is a little different. While a front will approach, approach on Saturday with a chance of a few associated snow flurries, there won't be much moisture accompanying the initial temperature drop. The main action kicks off later on Sunday. 
into the working week as a ferocious low-pressure system forms in the Tasman Sea. With a broad pool of cold air lingering over the southeast, this low has the potential to funnel large amounts of moisture over the mountains. Oh, look at that. But it will likely be hit and miss, as these systems tend to be. Some resorts might be lucky to see more than a few centimetres. Others could get a dump they talk about for years. There's also the potential for some dramatic temperature fluctuations early next week. As the low brings in warmer air from the Tasman Sea at times, we could see an atmospheric battle between frigid air over mainland and mild maritime air, with the snow level dropping and rising accordingly. The resort where things look to be really exciting is Mount Borbor, the closest ski hill to Melbourne and Australia's lowest resort topping out at just 1,550 metres above sea level. Poor old Borbor has done it tough in recent years and there's strong evidence of declining snowfall as the climate has warmed. Um, maybe if people stop playing with the weather. Uh, but occasionally the weather gods still conspire to deliver huge totals to Borbor. That usually happens in a strong southerly, or as will be the case next week, when a low is positioned in just the right spot off the East Gippsland coast. Tasmania's only commercial ski resort, Ben Lomond near Launceston, is also in line for its first significant snowfalls of the 2024 winter. At present, its barely skiable snow cover is entirely machine made. For the main New South Wales and Victoria resorts, including Perisher, Threadbow, Charlotte's Pass, Selwyn, Mount Hotham, Falls Creek and Mount Buller, the signs are promising. But for now, it's all a matter of wait and see what Monday brings. The good news is this system has opened the door, so to speak, for further, for further snowy systems, with good pointers to snow-bearing cold fronts peaking in eastern Australia in the coming two-week period. As ever, keep checking our snow page for the latest forecasts, snow cams and more. Do I sound professional? <laughs> oh dear. Yep, snow is likely a long way north of the mountains. Okay, this was 10th of July. One thing we haven't seen so far this winter in Australia and which we barely saw through the whole of last winter is snow in areas beyond the alpine regions of New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. But snow looks highly possible over a period of several days beginning early next week. In places like the Blue Mountains, just west of Sydney, the southern and central and northern tablelands of New South Wales, elevated parts of the AC2, ACT, including relatively low hills on the fringe of Canberra and perhaps even parts of the city itself. Elevated parts of Victoria outside the Victorian Alps, elevated parts of Tasmania below the mountainous areas, and perhaps even the granite belt of southern Queensland. Wow. The cold air is set to reach southeastern Australia by Saturday, with single-digit maximums likely in all the aqua blue areas on the map shown below. All the way up here. But the coming weather will deliver more than just a day or two of chilly weather, a prolonged outbreak of frigid air with Antarctic origins. See how they keep saying Antarctic origins? That's that event that's happening down there. I don't know what they're doing, but something's going on down there. We'll envelop southeastern Australia for most of next week from this weekend onwards. Wedged between a strong high pressure system, centred over the bight and low in the Tasman Sea, this lingering bitterly cold air mass will make it feel like someone left the fridge door open for several days. It will be cold even for July, that much we can guarantee. What remains uncertain at this stage is how much moisture will be associated with that system and when it will arrive. Weather zone meteorologist Felix Levesque says the New South Wales central table lands could see snow flurries at higher levels around uh, 1,200 metres as early as Sunday night, Monday morning, with the possibility of snow increasing throughout Monday and Tuesday as more moisture arrives. The snow level could drop to 1,000 metres midweek as a new influx of moisture kicks in. Snow around midweek is also likely in the Barrington Tops just northwest of Newcastle, which rise to almost 1,600 metres at their highest point. The northern tablelands should also get their share, including the town of Gurira, Gura, Gaira, which is at 1,330 metres, is Australia's highest town outside the Alpine region. Further south, the snow line on the mainland will drop to 600 or 700 metres by midweek, 
Most of Canberra lies at or just below 600 metres, so snow in the city itself is not out of the question. Victoria will also see snowfalls at times in places beyond the mountains that rarely see a settled cover, while in Tasmania the slow snow line should be about 700 metres. It's not often with a winter cold outbreak that the snow line in Tasmania is similar to areas more than a thousand kilometres north, but both the northward push and the duration of the coming cold air mass promise to be quite remarkable. As for the ski resorts, this system can only be good news. Snow cover beyond the snowmaking slopes is currently thin at the higher Australian resorts and non-existent at lower resorts. Likely snowfall totals for the resorts are likely to predict, predict with this system, but the midweek period looks best for significant falls. At the very least, they should be able to fire up the snow guns all week. We'll keep you posted, and as ever, check out the snow page at Weather Zone. Okay. Okay, so this is Friday at 6.25 p.m. Let's have a look what's going on here. Which one is it? I think it's this thing here. That's about to come over and push right up. There again, it could be either one of these. No, that one, they normally go from west to east. It normally goes that way. Um, so I'm going to, I'm saying, I'm thinking it's going to be this thing, is it? That's pushing up. It's starting to push this up. Okay. So there you go. There's warnings for, um, all the way through from Tasmania through to Queensland. Anyway, guys, you can let me know what you think about this down below. Uh, stay safe, uh, stock up. And I hope you've got a fire heater in case the electricity goes out. And I hope you're not running on solar because it's going to happen for at least a week. I'm pretty sure it's going to be cloudy most of that time. Okay, guys, hope you have a good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And I'll talk to you soon. I'll be back tomorrow for a live stream, guys. So please tune in with me at 9am in the morning. Australian Eastern time, standard time. Yep, okay. I'll see you then anyway. <laughs> okay, guys. Bye.